Okay, go ahead until I tell you to stop. Okay. And as you can see, this time we're sitting just over 180 PSI. Today we're gonna to be doing a compression test on this 1995 GMC Suburban. It's got the 5.7 liter throttle body injected 350 in it. And surprisingly, this thing only has about 86,000 original miles on it. That being said, it is from 1995 and this is the original engine. So I'm curious of the actual health of this engine. I don't suspect any major problems or anything like that. Just simply curious of the overall compression. And so I figured why not do it right here on the channel. So if you've always wondered about how exactly to perform a compression test on your engine, especially on an older engine like mine, this video may provide some very valuable information. With an asterisk, of course, I am not a professional technician, just a dude with a camera in his garage. So I've gotta say, this video is for entertainment purposes only. In order to perform this compression test, I'm gonna need a few things. The first and foremost, of course, is a quality compression tester. I got this one on Amazon. It had good reviews and it does seem like it's made pretty well. I'll put a link down in the description below. I'll also be utilizing the directions in my Chilton book here. Here on page 3-58, we have all the directions for the compression test. I'm also gonna need something to write on so that I can write the value of each compression reading. Aside from the actual compression tester and the instructions, there are a few things I'm gonna have to do to prepare for this. Number one, I need to make sure I have the proper viscosity oil and the proper amount in the engine. Number two, I need to run the engine and bring it up to normal operating temperature. In order to check the compression of the engine, we're gonna have to turn the engine over with the gauge attached. The problem is we don't want the engine to actually run. So here in my fuse block under the hood, I'm gonna locate my fuel pump relay and pull this thing out. With that fuel pump relay pulled, the fuel pump won't even turn on, and so therefore there will be no fuel being pumped into the engine. One other thing I have to do is disable the ignition system. I've gone ahead and removed the air cleaner housing, and just behind the throttle body is the coil and the distributor cap. I'm going to remove the wire connecting them both together. And that's it. At this point, I believe I am ready to begin the process of checking the compression in each cylinder. I've made sure I have the correct type and level of oil. The engine is warmed up to operating temperature. I've disabled the fuel system by pulling the fuel pump relay, and I've also disabled the ignition system by pulling the coil wire. I'm now gonna pull my first spark plug. I'm gonna pull the frontmost spark plug on the driver's side. All right, we got it. This is also a very excellent time to be able to check the condition of your spark plugs. This one looks okay. Now it's time to screw the hose into the spark plug hole. I'll go ahead and fish it into place. I now have the hose fully screwed into the spark plug hole. And one thing to note, you just wanna be careful not to cross thread. It's now time to connect this actual gauge. And to do that, I'm gonna lift up on the collar, slide it over the fitting, and slide the collar down and we should be good to go. Everything is now hooked up and I'm ready to start turning the engine over so I can read the compression on this front most cylinder on the driver's side. I have my wife sitting behind the wheel. She's first going to fully press the gas pedal, opening the throttle plate, and then she's gonna crank it until I tell her to stop. Press the gas pedal all the way down to the floor. No, not the brake. The gas pedal. Okay, now start the engine. Okay, and there you can see our first reading. It looks like this cylinder has really good compression. We're sitting just under 170 PSI. I'm gonna press this button here, relieving the pressure, and I'm gonna run the test one more time. Okay, go ahead until I tell you to stop. Okay, and as you can see, this time we're sitting just over 180 PSI. That is a really good reading. And now I'm gonna write down the result of this frontmost driver's side cylinder. All right, so let's recap what just happened. While we were looking at the gauge, we saw that needle jump up with every compression stroke of the piston. And once you see that needle stop climbing, for example, when it hit 180 and it didn't get any higher, you know you can stop cranking the engine and that number is your compression. And now I'm gonna go through and test the remaining seven cylinders and we'll come back with the results. The next step is to remove that gauge, replace the spark plug and that spark plug wire and move on to the next one. Okay, I'm now done with the entire driver's side of the engine. And you can see the numbers I've recorded here are all really close to each other, which is great. I'm really happy with the results from the driver's side of the engine. Now time to move on to the passenger side.
Well, I'm just about done here. This is the second to last closest to the firewall on the passenger side. And you can see here, the number is just about 180 PSI. I'm gonna go ahead and relieve the pressure. And you can see here, we have seven out of eight of them done and all of the pressures are very, very close to each other. So let's go ahead and hope that this last one is the same. Another thing to mention are these spark plugs. They all look really good. Okay, here we are testing the very last cylinder. And this one is on the passenger side closest to the firewall. My wife's in the driver's seat. She's gonna press the gas pedal all the way down and start cranking until I tell you to stop. <laughs> And you can see here when that gauge stopped rising, we were just over 180 PSI. So I am officially done with the compression test of my engine. Now let's take a look at the results. You can see on my diagram here, we have the front of the vehicle. This is the driver's side and this is the passenger side. And all of these numbers are extremely close to each other. Looks like my lowest reading was 175 and my highest reading was this last one at about 181. When I go ahead and read in my Chilton book, it talks about comparing the pressures with each other. So for example, we need to know the highest pressure rating and the lowest pressure rating. And the book says that the lowest reading should be within 75% of the highest reading. They give an example of 150 PSI for the highest reading and the lowest reading being 113. And that 75 percentile range is within spec. Mine seems to be a much higher pressure at about 180, and all of them seem to be a lot closer, so within just a few percentage points. If I go ahead and calculate what percentage 175 is out of 181, it's about 96 percent. So from my understanding, this is a really, really good result. All right, compression check is done. I tried my best to follow the directions out of the Chilton manual and also the directions that came with the compression tester by Innova. And just like I said before, I am not a professional technician. This video was for entertainment purposes only. I know it's possible that I did a few things incorrectly. I did notice some sparks coming off of the coil post and that's probably not good. I'm guessing there's probably a better way to disable that ignition system rather than what I did, which was simply just pulling that coil post wire. In any regard, I was able to get it done and it looks like my numbers are all really good. And like I say at the end of most of my videos, if you have anything to add, any input, go ahead and comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to hit that thumbs up. It does help the video and the channel. And also if you're watching this far and you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. My name is Jimmy, the channel is One Road, and I will see you in the next one.